love with Chef Nancy. So today we are going to make an amazing dish and we're gonna make it with love. Some of you guys may remember Nancy from our women's event in February. She catered all of that amazing food that you ladies raved about. So we had to do something today where we created a meal. She, so she's gonna teach me how to create a meal. So what are we making today? Yes, so today we are making spicy Thai basil chicken. Okay. Have you ever made it before? Nope. All right, <laughs> this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be absolutely fun. All right, so making spicy Thai basil chicken, most of your time will be in the prep. So gotcha. what a lot of chefs go by and a lot of cooks are mise en place. So what that means is everything in place so that when you're ready for the cooking process, you're just throwing everything in the pan and you're done cooking. So the prep is what usually takes the most amount of time. Got okay? you. So I have everything already prepped, already chopped, minced, diced, ready to go. So see, that's the difference between me because when I cook, I don't like prepare like this. I just kind of like, okay, where's my seasoning? Let me yes. grab it. <laughs> Let me and do that. That makes life a little more hectic only because you have to step away from the fire, grab your item, things may be not where they're supposed to be, gotcha. and that kind of messes you up. So okay. it's very important to just get everything all prepped and ready so that you can just throw everything and be done with the process. All right. Okay. So let me tell you what we're using today for our spicy Thai basil chicken. This dish is so delicious, you guys. Okay, gotcha. so I already did a run through, I've cooked it already, and I've already found how I've altered to my liking, okay? Gotcha. So you tweaked it? Yes. Okay. Okay. So with any recipe, recipes are a guide. They're only a guide. You can tweak, you can adjust, you can substitute for whatever item the recipe calls for, as long as it's in proportion and in balance. Okay. Okay. Because cool. recipes are about balance of flavor, balance of ingredients. So that's why it's important to have all the ingredients within your recipe, but you can change it up a bit. Got, you. Got it? And I guess what makes this real life is because you hear my daughter in the background. So for all of you mommies, you know, this is real life. Finding the time to prep even while having our regular responsibilities of, of children or work or whatever. Well, here's another maybe. great idea though when you prep. What's that? Your husband can help you do something. Good. That's so good. Or if you're not married, one of your girlfriends, or your friends, you or somebody, or a family member can yes. help you too. So yes. yeah, you can make it a fun activity, especially during COVID. So if you're like living with someone, you can kind of have like some type of ladies' night yes. or a date night. Yes. So do you think that this is like a perfect date night dish Absolutely. or a ladies' night dish? Absolutely. My husband Adrian always comes in and assists wherever I need him. You remember the soups I used to do? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have him label, label everything for me and then start lay, uh, putting everything in the cups for me while I was preparing the soup. Okay. So if it, it, it's a joint effort, you can do it together for as a date or you can just grab anybody and just have them the soup. I like that. Right? Making it all about community because we're better together. So I like right. that. I like that. And you compensate them with the food at the end. I know, that's right. All right. Who wants what you get? food? You you go get your food. <laughs> right. You go eat together. Right. So I love that. I love it, that idea. It all works out at the yes. end. Yes. Everybody is good. Yes. <laughs> all right. So what do we do next? Now okay. we, we know we have our ingredients. Okay. So let's go through the ingredients. Okay. And it's basic. You don't see a whole lot of things on this table. Okay. So for family of four, right? So everything has to be scaled. For family of four, I'm going to use two and a half pounds of bonus skinless chicken thighs. Okay. The reason why I use boneless thighs is because the juice, the, the meat, the meat to me is a bit juicier, has a bit more flavor. Um, you can also use chicken breasts. Gotcha. Uh, that tends to be a little more dry, but uh, again, if you have enough sauce in your dish, then that will compensate. Okay. So you dice the chicken? I dice the chicken to bite-sized pieces. Okay. And what you want to do is try to dice all your ingredients to the same size, because when they're evenly diced. It's um, the cooking process will be even across the board. Okay. With your ingredients. So I have two and a half pounds of diced uh, boneless chicken thighs. Okay. I have a half a cup of chicken broth. Okay. I have two tablespoons of oyster sauce. All right. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. 
and one and a half teaspoons of fish sauce. Oh, that's different. Yeah, so I have three sauces in here. <laughs> that's different. Now, <laughs> traditional Thai food, the sauces are dark in color. Gotcha. This is where the color comes from. Gotcha. From your soy sauce, your oyster sauce, and your fish sauce. Okay. Okay. Now, with a lot of soy sauces, sugar is the balance. You have your mm. sweet and your you have your sweet and your salty. So over here, I have two tablespoons of white sugar and two tablespoons of brown sugar. Perfect. Right. In a lot of Asian cooking, whenever you have soy sauce, you have sugar. Because you have to kind of balance it out. Correct. Rather than like if not, you're gonna have a really salty dish. Right. Okay. The food is about balance, guys. Okay. Flavorful balance. I have two large shallots. Okay. Diced. I have about eight garlic cloves in here. I love garlic. Put 10 garlic cloves if you want. <laughs> Put 11 garlic cloves if you want. If you want extra garlic punch and taste, you don't want to go overboard, but this is a good amount of garlic. So okay. you get about eight cloves. But it's more about the taste. It's it's the flavor. The Correct. Um, what I did was, I have a garlic press. Okay. Some people may uh, find me dice their garlic, but I like the, the garlic press because it gives me a small uh, size uh, garlic piece that cooks really quickly. Okay, perfect. All right. Now in here, I have four diced chilies, okay? okay? So your chilies, you're gonna dice them, um, and they're, they're, you know, they're just diced, smallly, finely, um, just to, again, evenly with the shallots, you want them evenly diced so that the cooking process is even across the board. Okay, all right? So it's about four uh, chilies. Now, spicy Thai basil chicken, though, calls for about anywhere from four to 10 chilies. Can you handle the heat? Yikes. I know for me, I can't handle the heat, so I would like to scale back <laughs> on the chili. Then you would use two. Just a hint. Okay. okay. <laughs> then you would use two. So the chilies will lose the intensity of the heat as it's being cooked. Got you. Right. So okay. you want to make sure that they're really cooked so that the intensity of the heat was is brought down. Yeah. Because there's not, you're going to be a kitchen. <laughs> There's a trick though also. Let's say you cook something and your food is too spicy. Mm -hmm. How you fix that, how you correct that. See, food can always be corrected. Remember that. How you correct spicy food is you mount it with fat. So if you add cream to it, if you add butter to it, it kills the spice. Oh, so is that why when they say you have something spicy, you drink milk? Correct. That it helps? Yeah. It Interesting. It will take away the burn. Okay. So that's so you can always correct. You guys, cooking is always fun as long as you know how to correct. You taste as you go along, and it will be to your liking, and that's what makes it the best. Oh, cool. To your liking. Okay. So what is our last ingredient? Our last ingredient is the pièce de basil sauce. <laughs> it is the basil. So this is fresh, roughly chopped basil, and this goes at the end of the cooking process. So why not use dry basil? Why fresh basil? So fresh basil has an intensity of flavor. Gotcha. When anything is dried out, it's dehydrated mm -hmm. and it loses its, its intensity of flavor. Awesome. So you want to use always, when you're cooking, I prefer to use fresh ingredients. Fresh parsley, fresh thyme, fresh cilantro. Because I'm gonna get that extra boost of flavor, that mm -hmm. extra intense. And I love, it's like a umami. It's a burst of flavors in your mouth. Gotcha. So I, I really believe in having food not only look good, but taste good. So okay. fresh basil is the way to go. Fresh basil, that's the way to go. Okay. All right, you ready to get started? Yes, let's get started, let's, let's get this. cooking. Are you guys ready? So while we're doing this, we're just gonna ask that you just take notes, because we want you eventually to create this dish, send us pictures, show us yes. what you're doing. And yes. yeah, so we're going to that's get scary. started. I am excited. I wanna see how you guys do. Yes. Post those pics yes. on our website. <laughs> Make sure you tag us. Make me proud. Make me proud. Well, let's see. Let's see if you are a good teacher. Because we'll know based on how I cook the meal. Girl, stop. Let's go. Hey, everyone. I know today you're watching Chef Nancy. And I know she's doing a fabulous job because she's excellent at what she does. And if it wasn't for us socially distancing, I would be over there uh, munching on what it is that she's cooking right now. So... I know she's the bomb.com, but my name is not McDonald for nothing, okay? I don't just make fast food burgers. Let me tell you what a brother does, okay? Let me just show you a little something what a brother does. Let's let's just see what a little bit a little bit what the brother does. Let's see. Let's see what's in here. What you got? What you got, McDonald? What you got? What you got, McDonald? Oh, what's this? What's this chicken you got here, son? Oh, 
oh, oh, don't spill it, don't spill it. Look at this chicken you got here, son. Mmm, look at that basil on there. Got lemon on there. I won't tell you what the secret sauce is in there. Ooh, yo, don't sleep on me. I got some skills. But listen, you pay attention to Chef Nancy. God bless you. And welcome back. So, Chef Nancy, what is next? So what's next is we're gonna start the cooking process. Okay. And we're gonna start putting all of our ingredients into the pan and get started. But before we do that, can you, let's talk about these pots. Okay. Like for a dish like this, what pot do you typically use? Okay, so in a lot of Asian cooking, what you use is the wok. Okay. Okay, because the wok it distributes the heat not on the bottom, but on the sides. So you're constantly stirring tossing oh, and it's like a one pot you throw everything in this wok and the dish is done okay so this is like when you like i know when i go to the chinese food store and i see them flipping the fried rice mm -hmm. so they're using a wok they're using a wok it's Gosh. cooking the rice evenly throughout the wok and they have more surface space as opposed to one flat bottom got you the sides are heated the bottom is heated so the rice is cooking no matter which way they're Even. stirring correct Got you. Okay. Learn something new, because for me, like a pot is a pot, but oh, no. you know, in order, I've learned that in order to cook a good dish, you need good pots. Absolutely. And a good knife. And a good knife. You need a good pot and a good knife. So what knives do you use? So my main knives are the chef knife. Okay. Okay. The chef knife is basically the pointed knife and it has the pointed uh, tip gotcha. at the bottom, at the top, I'm sorry, and a good one. I know, I get very detailed, but a good one that has balance, that it's evenly, um, it, it's very light in your hand. Okay. Okay. Now these range in price, type, style, but we're not going to get into that because I could talk a whole hour. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's the chef knife. Okay. The other knife that I use is a santoku. The santoku is mainly used for chopping veggies. Okay. So this is more of a rough chop kind of knife. This awesome. is more for slicing, cutting through, because your tip, you slice all the way through from tip to end. Mm -hmm. And your santoku is mainly for rough chopping. Awesome. Which is why it has a curved uh, tip right here. Oh, okay. Cool. So see, I don't know about you guys, but I learned something new. I learned about a walk, and I learned about knives, so. Stick with me. Yes. All right, so what we're gonna do is put our walk on high heat. Okay. And we're gonna get started. Now, how we're gonna get started is, you remember the soy sauce, yes. the fish sauce, and the oyster sauce? Yes. We're gonna go ahead and put it in a bowl. All right. Oops. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put that in a bowl. Okay. And then we're gonna add the sugar, the brown sugar and the white sugar. Okay. We're gonna add that in. And you're gonna like mix it up? Correct. Okay. So we're gonna give that a stir. And this is gonna be our sauce, our base for the sauce. It's gonna give our sauce the color, the flavor, the intensity, okay? okay. Remember I said salty and sweet? They have to balance, balance it out. Perfect. And then you taste. Everything you do, you taste. Okay. Your hands must be clean, of course, but you taste. All right, so we have our high heat. And we're gonna go ahead and start. You start with the chicken. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the chicken in the heat. So I noticed that you're using wood. like a, a wood utensil. What's the purpose of that? Yes. So you want to cook with wood because number one, you don't want to scrape your pan, right? Interesting. Your pans are usually enamel coated, so the wooden spoon helps from preventing any scraping. Gotcha. Because where, where does that scraping go? Mm, in your food. Correct. And you don't want that. See, that's something else. You know, we usually use a lot of like metal utensils for the plastic ones, but even the plastic ones, sometimes they melt, they melt as you go. So, Correct. what is the way to go? What is the way to go? Awesome. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna have to go ahead and put the chicken in. Good uh, thing we got aprons. Yes. <laughs> aprons are a lifesaver, yes. okay? Because of splatter and just the sauces. Okay. I don't know about you, but when I cook like tomato sauce, mm -hmm. a lot of the splatter will come out. Yes! It landed exactly <laughs> on my shirt. Yes. You can't go anywhere else. Of course, but on my shirt. So we're gonna go ahead and um, cook this chicken until okay. it's until it's um, cooked all the way through. So 
you wait till it's browned and cooked all the way through. So Correct. how do you know that it's cooked all the way through, the, the so, pinkness of it, right? Correct. So it's going to lose its pink flavor. You want to cook your chicken all the way through. Gotcha. No pinkness. Mm -hmm. um, that's the general rule of thumb with chicken. Salmon and other meats. <laughs> <laughs> Salmon is different. But chicken, you want to cook it all the way through. Okay. And we're going to continue to cook it because we're going to add all the ingredients to it and let it cook down even more. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. So when I cooked this before, so I'm from the islands. I'm Haitian. Yes. And we cook with hippies. Yeah. Hippies is a seasoning. It's like a custom made seasoning. Custom made seasoning. Yes. <laughs> when I did this dish before, I marinated my meat in the hippies. It completely altered the flavor of this dish. Really? Well, I'm yes. not surprised because of all of the different ingredients that goes into Ippies. So it kind of takes over and overpowers it. So it's, it's less Thai. Right. <laughs> less Thai and it's more Caribbean. Yes. So that was, that was the first way that I learned, okay, do not put that. Um, the Hispanics have something similar, sofrito. Yes. I would suggest that you not put in, do not marinate your meat. Just clean your meat. And you want to use clean, unflavored, unseasoned meat when you're doing this dish. Okay, because so because the your seasoning will alter the taste completely. So when you clean your meat, because I know we're like Caribbean, so mm -hmm. do you clean it with lime and lemon and vinegar? What do you use? I use vinegar and mm -hmm. lime. Lime, okay. Correct. Okay, cool. So rinse it under, you know, rinse it with hot water. Uh, clean it with vinegar and lime. I take off any uh, excess fat, fat. and. Voila, just okay. clean. Some people uh, put some hot water over it and clean it in hot water in addition to that. But this is fairly, it, it, the for vinegar and the lime. Yeah, but this dish is specifically enough. is enough. Correct. Whereas if you're making more extensive meat, then pouring the hot water would be necessary. Correct. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I think that the techniques change depending on the dish that you're making. So yes. like for this dish, you wouldn't use your custom ifies, but for like other dishes, like if you were making like uh, a grill, which is fried pork, yes. or if you're making like a pork chop, yeah, you would use your ippies. Absolutely, gotcha. And I always do. Okay. <laughs> I always do. So tell them because there, some people may not know because we're saying custom made. So what goes into like your ippies? Okay, so how I make mine is I put um, my, my scallion, okay. my red bell pepper, green bell pepper, I do a little celery, mm -hmm. I do onion, of course. I do my cilantro, my parsley. Um, I use two types of parsley. There's curly parsley and there's Italian parsley. Mm -hmm. um, they both have different flavor. Do you use so both? both? I use both. Okay. A little bit of oil, scotch bonnet, and then I use, um, I also use, uh, it gives it a, a little, I, I'll use a little uh, sazon packet or bouillon cube um, for a little kick of flake for the salt portion of it. Okay. Yeah. So, of course, we're not going to use that for this dish, but that's a great tip because if you already have your ippies or your sofrito already prepared when you're cooking those meals, it's already ready for you. All you have to do is clean your meat like clean your meat and then you season it and then you let it sit and marinate that's it. and that thing will just be amazing. It's a huge <laughs> difference. Let me tell you, the holy trinity is salt, pepper, garlic. Mm -hmm. Once you add your eggs, yes, it'd be that's it. That's what we said. Maybe that's it. Um, and it stores in the refrigerator for a good week. Okay, put it in a jar, it stores in a yeah. week. Right? So we have our chicken here. As mm -hmm. you can see, the pinkness has gone. Yeah. So most of the rawness is, has uh, gone. So what I'm gonna do is, you remember what I told you about the chilies? Yes. So the longer you cook them, the less. <laughs> so you're gonna start with the chili. I'm gonna start with okay. the chili. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour the chilies into. Into your chicken. Into the chicken. Okay. Let that cook. Mm. I'm also gonna add my shallots. Now, the reason why we use shallots as opposed to onion, is because shallots give a sweeter flavor to your food. It's not as intense as regular onion. So shallot is an onion. It's in the onion family, but it's a, it's a, bit, a bit less intense, um, and you don't cry when you're cutting it. Okay, is shallot the same thing as a red onion? Um, it's not the same as a red onion. It's very similar to the Okay, red. so is it smaller? It's a smaller. Gotcha. It is smaller. 
Um, it is similar because you see the little Yeah, it looks like it. I thought it was like red onions. No, it's a shallot. Okay. Um, a lot of uh, French food. The a lot of fine gourmet food is shallot. I think it's red onions. Something new. I thought it was red onions, but you learned today that it's shallots. <laughs> it's shallots. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and add the shallot to the pan. Okay, I love shallots and onions. Of course, again, you scale your recipe to your liking. Gotcha. If onion is not your thing, yeah, don't onions use are onions. definitely my thing. Okay. <laughs> I love for the taste of garlic and onions. Like, it just does something to your food. It, no, it really does. <laughs> it absolutely it so does. enhances the taste. Yes. But speaking of garlic, let's go ahead and add that. Yes. Um, what most times, nine times out of ten. Okay. I like to add garlic to the end of my cooking process because I like the taste of garlic. Mm -hmm. um, the intensity of the taste of it, it um, you're not cooking it to oblivion. So okay. it's still fresh, you, you taste that fresh garlic. But we're gonna go ahead and add that in now because again, like I said, the basil is the star of the show. Yeah. Not the garlic. Mm. Okay. So whereas if you were to add it at the end, it would, it would overpower, overpower the basil. Correct. Okay, cool. So fresh ingredients, fresh. There's nothing wrong with powdered or dry ingredients. Yeah. Um, I have a cabinet full of them. I love dry ingredients. But when you're making a specialty dish, you want to use as much fresh as possible. Okay. Okay. Is it because the taste is just enhanced? It is. Okay. It's way more enhanced. And I think like growing up, I've always seen my mom like peeling, like um, peeling all of these veggies and all of the herbs and um, crushing the garlic, mm -hmm. so I've always seen her use less powder. And, yes, and generally always like fresh ingredients. But of course nowadays, we see all of these different like powdered um, ingredients in the store, and I guess they're just more convenient. Correct. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and add our chicken broth. Okay. Okay. And this gives. This is just gonna give us. So a lot of dishes. Um, what you want to do is the sauces intensify as they are reduced. It's called okay. reduction. Okay. So a lot of a lot of sauces, you find them thick and intense in flavor because they've been reduced. Okay. And being reduced simply means that they've been cooking and they kind of uh, evaporate and intensify and kind of thickens in the pan during the cooking process. Yeah, I have noticed that. Like the more it cooks, it becomes like thicker mm -hmm. and more and more flavorful. Right. And I made some dishes where when it when I feel that when it has um, gotten to that point, sometimes you and, and maybe you could tell me like if a date if a dish you find that during that point is too salty or too spicy, like what do you do? So if a if a dish is too spicy, the way you the way you correct that is you add fat to it. Okay. You mount it. We call mounting it with fat. You mount it with fat. So that means adding cream. Okay. Or butter. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's all that means. So food can always be corrected. Now, during during school, culinary school, you were taught to bake and cook. Okay. Baking was not my thing. <laughs> Why did we all have our thing? We all have our niche. Like it was all <laughs> one mistake, and the whole product is messed up, and you yeah. won't find out until the end. The end. And like, you realize like, this out is of the an epic fail. Yes, it's out of the oven for after an hour. And then you taste it and you're like, what happened? When you retrace your steps, one, one missing ingredient. Okay. Well, you know, I guess we all can't be great at everything, right? <laughs> right. Can't right. be great at everything. Look, pick your thing and be great at that. You and do not thing. have to be great at everything. You don't need to be a chef to, to know how to cook and to cook healthy things because that's why we're cooking with love, right? Yes. We want to make sure that what we put in our bodies is also like healthy and good for us, especially in this year. I think, you know, we're we're walking in a new a new year. We're walking with confidence and we're walking with boldness and yes. just putting things into our bodies that are, are don't only just taste good, but that are good for us. Yeah. So that's that's the whole purpose of cooking with love, showing us that we can have amazing dishes that taste good, but that are also good for us. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Let thy food be thy medicine. Yes. I'm big on that. <laughs> okay. What you put into your temple yes. is important. 
okay? It can, and you don't have to compromise. It sure. can taste good, it can be good, it can be amazing. And I'm gonna also share with you some alternatives. Okay. For those who don't eat meat, because we have a lot of our vegetarian friends out there, mm -hmm. and um, those who are, might be gluten-free. So we have those alternatives. Okay. With cooking, there are always alternatives now, because now the world is food conscious. It's very true. And they offer great alternatives in the supermarket. It's crazy because back in the day, I didn't hear much about vegans or like a lot of vegetarians. It was like a little here and there. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, it's like there's so many different people who are vegetarian or vegan. Mm -hmm. So it's like now you even go to the restaurant. Awareness. Yeah, you go to the restaurant movement. and like all of the menus have adopted and realized, okay, everybody's not into yeah. meat. And gluten free. <laughs> yeah, gluten free is a you. big thing. Yeah. Okay. It's real. So whatever you whatever you eat or do not eat, there's always um, options. For you. Absolutely. I'm gonna go ahead and add the last piece. So we already added most of the ingredients. Okay. Remember I said the basil. Last. Last, because it's a starvy shell. Correct. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and add. Add special sauce. The sauce. Okay. Right. So we just add all of that in. Get all that. Scrape all that goodness. You don't want to miss that. Nope. All that goodness from the bottom of the bowl <laughs> into the pan, don't mind the splatter. You clean that up after. You give it a good stir. Now you see how your color is now coming into play. Yes. Okay, so it's a mixture of your colors and your flavors. And we're gonna let this reduce. It's gonna become thicker as it cooks down and intensify. Awesome. So you know what I noticed with you prepping in advance? Mm -hmm is that you have less of a mess. Yes, absolutely. Because for me, when I'm done cooking, I feel like it's a whole nother job to like clean up after myself, after I'm done cooking, because I feel like I have everything out and I'm yes. pulling everything out and I'm like, oh my God, I don't even feel like eating after because I'm like, <laughs> you're exhausted yes. and then you gotta clean up? I'm like, you know what, I'll just clean up and eat later. Yes. But I noticed that because you have prepped and already had all of your ingredients set out that yes. it's less of a mess. Correct. That's, right. a, that's another advantage of mise en place. Everything is placed. Because you, everything is contained, um, everything, you know, the rest of whatever you're not using is put away in the refrigerator. Less mess. Less I like it. But you know, not everybody, especially in my household, cleans up. Doesn't it? Um, <laughs> I have people who uh, destroy the kitchen when they're cooking. God bless them. I think this is me. I think I think I am one of those people as well. And I promise in 2021, I am going to do better. Be better, please. Do, do better. better with me, guys. Do, do better. better. Do better. But afterwards, I, I clean it up. But it's just in the process. It's like, oh my God, it's or it's our burritos. Like, we're not You're too tired. Just want to eat. Just sit down and eat. I feel like me, you have, you know, children in the house, something do the dishes and clean up for you. Yeah, yeah man, I have babies that I gotta clean oh, up after. You're on your own. You're on in your addition own. to cleaning up my mess. You're on your own. <laughs> so what you wanna do now is you wanna taste, right? Okay. So during the cooking process, you eye, you know, you watch your food, and you also taste at the same time. Got you. All right? Okay, so what I do not do is I don't taste with a spoon and then put it in my mouth and then put it back. You put it in your palm? I put it in my palm, okay? Um, Oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Alright, no, it's okay. not fair. If you just taste, how she just gonna teach okay. me how to make a meal and then okay. not allow me to taste it? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Alright, alright, alright. Oh my god. <laughs> okay? Like, I'm not even guessing. <laughs> this, this is really good. <laughs> First of all, when I'm cooking for a crowd, first thing I do is I say a prayer, right? Only because it, I center myself. Okay. Um, that's how I start my cooking process. I pray, I center myself, and then I pray that the food it blesses those who are going to eat. Okay. All right, so I, I not only pray for 
sent, I pray for myself during the process, but, but for everyone else. else, everyone else, correct. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's just, that was my secret. Um, even at TCC, when I did my event, mm -hmm. I had to start with the prayer. You better got me sent. Right. You better be praying over <laughs> your food yeah. before you serve it to people. Yeah. And um, because I, I cook for crowds, I cook for those who are up in age, our seen our seasoned saints. So you have to be mindful of a lot of things, and you wanted God to be included in the process. Correct. That makes sense. When God's in it, you can't lose. Yes. That's it. So do you have like a love for cooking? I do. So my love started years ago when I, I realized that you can take two things, add them together, and it becomes something else. Mm. Okay, so that was, that was where my love started. Um, I was in the medical field. I told my husband I'd like to take a stab at cooking. Stab. <laughs> uh, at cooking, and then um, he supported my dream. Went to culinary school, and it was a wrap. I had an absolutely amazing time during my schooling, my school years. Um, Started working for catering companies, delis. Um, I also worked for a Jewish company, so I learned a lot about the Jewish cooking process. Awesome, amazing. So you, your your portfolio is pretty diverse. It is diverse. Um, I wish I went abroad, um, and I never got that chance. Um, my boys were small at the time. My husband needed me. My boys needed me, so I couldn't travel abroad. Um, but traveling abroad, uh, European, authentic French cooking and European cooking is completely completely different and i wish i've got that but that's okay you did take a class i remember not too long like maybe a few years back where you told me that you made um was it spaghetti from scratch yes you made yeah. all spaghetti we took a spaghetti class so i i made my husband come with me um <laughs> and he is excellent he's always down for anything mm -hmm. he's my partner my friend everything so he's okay. always down for fun just for some fun um, so we took a pasta making class and I learned the authentic way to make pasta. So awesome. that's another way if you cannot travel abroad, take local cooking classes when they teach you authentic uh, techniques and techniques, correct. Oh, that's cool. Yep. That so, so cool. that is another way. Mm, this is looking so good. Mm -hmm. You see how the, do you see how the sauce is reducing? Yes, it's getting thick. The yes. color is taking so well. Correct. So, and, and the crazy part is when I tasted it, I didn't even taste too much of the spice. Right. So because I guess you added it in the beginning. Correct. It it took down the intensity of Correct. the chili. So I definitely, I definitely noticed that. Correct. Um. So the so what happens when you add sugar to your sauces is caramelization. So caramelization is when the sugar is reduced, mm -hmm. and the sugar is a thickening, mm. sweetening agent. Okay. Okay. So that's always whenever you have sugar in your sauce, it's going to uh, be thick, sweet, and um, help the reduction, uh, the sauce be thick when it reduces. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So this is practically done. You're gonna yeah. give it a stir because I don't. What I don't want to happen is. For my sauce to evaporate. My house will love sauce. Yeah, we love sauce too. We love sauce. If there's no sauce, there's no food. Correct. <laughs> it's like I can serve you plate. And then I'll you wait. Nice. You will wait for the sauce. Like, I'll wait. They're like, it where's get, the sauce? It can get cold. Yes. You can go make the sauce. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you don't want all the sauce to evaporate. Okay. So this looks good to me. I'm gonna give it one more taste to see if it's missing anything, right? Food can always be corrected. Okay. It tastes absolutely perfect. Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do is turn off the heat. And now, our special ingredients. Yes, the basil. Wait, but are there different kinds of basil? I'm glad you asked. So, there. So in tra traditional Thai cooking, mm -hmm. there's Thai basil. Okay. There's there's Thai basil and there's holy there's Thai holy basil and there's Thai basil. Two different types. Okay. So holy basil and Thai basil. All right. Um, holy basil is found mainly in Thailand, Australia. It's it's rarely found in the United States. Okay. Thai basil though is found in the United States, and you can get those from your specialty stores. Okay. I could not find any, so I'm using regular basil. Okay. So all I did was I washed it mm -hmm. and then I rough chopped it. Um, so you can have the rough, you can have rough chop, or you can have it in strips. But you can even some Thai places have it whole. 
like little whole pieces. Mm. Um, but I just rough chop mine. Okay. So um, holy basil and so Thai basil has a bit more sweetness to it okay. than the regular traditional basil that we have in the States. But this is going to do just fine. It's still going to have the same effect on this dish. Um, so that's what we're going to do. You notice I turned my heat off. Yes. You notice I turned my heat off? Yes. Because you don't want to overcook your, your basil. Any fresh herb that you use, you never want to overcook it. Okay. Add it all the way at the end. Okay. So if you can't find like the type of basil that you're asking for, don't go crazy because no. you no. can just use regular basil and it'll be just fine. Correct. Okay. Cool. Alright, so we're gonna so go ahead and add it. it. working even if you're working from home this is like a perfect dish for you to cook for you or for your friends or for your family it looks amazing so i know it's going to taste amazing and i'm sure i'm going to tell you guys when she like plates it up and i'm excited to see the different ways that you plate it different ways of plating we're going to get into that and we're going to talk some more okay well we'll be back so for more recipes please feel free to go to your local library and scour through the food section. And you can find yourself a book that contains hundreds of recipes for you to go through. And go online. Yeah, it's there's tons so of many free recipes online. So you have no excuse. No so excuse. if you're looking for something good to make, go online, go to the library, go get yourself a cookbook. Yep. ready to be plated and you can see the color here in your dish look at all this goodness you can see your chicken pieces evenly coated you see the red chilies look how it's coating my spoon that's how you know this sauce is reduced and it's thick and it's intense so you you know what i noticed though mm -hmm. because you added the basil at the end mm -hmm. it's not like shriveled up as it would be if it was like added in the beginning of the dish because you save that as your final and main ingredient you see that yes. it still has its intensity and color and the texture is still like pretty much as if you just like put it in a girl pot. you got it <laughs> you got it so the rule of thumb is whenever you're adding parsley cilantro basil any fresh green herb okay. you want to add it at the end of your cooking process Interesting. so it can be fresh you don't want to overcook it because then you kill it okay because okay? it's a live food so you want the, the flavor the intensity to yes. remain and flavor your food properly. And that looks delicious. All right. Yes. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how we plated. So I added, these are the different options that you can do to plate your meal. Now traditional Thai cooking and plating involves a fried egg, sunny side up, slightly um, on the rice, so that when you bite into your egg, it oozes out all over the rice and gives it added um, just moisture and flavor. Got you. Right? But you so can do it without all that. Correct. Okay. Correct. <laughs> but you somebody like me that doesn't like, like egg. Egg. But No, 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 no. <laughs> My eggs were always fried hard and scrambled. All right. <laughs> all right. But I guess you give a variety and options to different people. Correct. And that is honestly a beautiful plate. Thank so. you. You can do it over white rice. You can do it over brown rice. You could do it over cauliflower rice for those of you who are staying away from starch and carbs and are maybe on keto. There are different options in every meal. Okay, okay, so if you were like, because it's a plated dish, mm -hmm. what would you put like on top of it to kind of like as your garnish? Like what would you? Oh, I love a good garnish. I would sprinkle, you can sprinkle some scallion. 
Okay. All right. Some chopped scallion. That would be finely chopped and great in flavor and top. color. Correct. Great okay. in flavor and color. I love eating my way through the rainbow. Um, you can put some scallion on top, some chives. Mm -hmm. You can add, as long as it's a delicate flavor that won't overpower your food, uh, yeah. you can add it on top. Oh, perfect. All right. So what do we have here? Over here is another option. For those of you who want to entirely stay away from the rice. Yeah, no carbs. No carbs. You can eat it on a couple of lettuce, okay? You can have get your favorite romaine mm. or bib lettuce and have yourself a lettuce cup. Okay, yeah, that's a lettuce a cup option. or you can do a lettuce wrap. Or lettuce or wrap. Or you kind of like wrap right. it up. Yes, yes, I like that. Okay. <laughs> um, a lot of people like mushroom caps. A lot of people will substitute uh, by putting a huge mushroom cap and their meat on top of it um, and eat it that way. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can be creative with food. I guess that's Very the, creative. That's the beautiful part about oh, cooking. Oh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And what I also wanted to get into with the broccoli. Feel free to throw in additional um, veggies to your meal. Okay. You can throw in, just cut your broccoli small. Remember, I said evenly diced yes. for even cooking. Yes. Okay, so what I would do is... So you would do the same technique with the broccoli? Same technique with the broccoli. Throw it in more so towards the ending of the cooking process. Okay. You, again, why am I throwing it at the end? Mm, so that it, that it, because it's such a, a main dish, so it can keep its flavor and color. I'm throwing it at the end so we don't kill it. Oh, because then it, it'll be soggy, and then, but when you throw it in at the end, it still has its crunch. But it's cooked, yes, okay. <laughs> I know a little bit, just a little bit, but I, I can cook y'all, <laughs> but not like her. I'm trying to get here, I can cook, but not like her, okay? <laughs> broccoli will remain crunchy. It will remain green mm. and it won't fall apart in your dish. So it'll be savory, Correct. but not overcooked. Correct. Because you don't want any like soggy, droopy broccoli. Correct. You oh, want I can't that. Stand it. I, I need my broccoli al dente. I need it crunchy. Ooh, but explain That's to them what al dente is. Because I learned what al dente is from like cooking pasta. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. so that's a made, that's a that's a, a, a widely used term like for to describe pasta. So al dente literally means to the tooth. But translating it means um, slightly undercooked you want a firm um, if, um, outcome to whatever pasta you're making um, pasta you never want to overcook pasta it'll fall apart yes so or you, you want it al dente and it carries over like it, it finishes cooking you're gonna pat sauce over it you're gonna mm. heat it up so you want it al dente because because I remember when I first started learning how to make pasta and spaghetti, mm -hmm. I used to think that you had to like cook it all the way through while it's like boiling before the sauce. So then I had like super soft spaghetti that wasn't like spaghetti, it was like a bush. So I'm like, okay, this isn't That's the, the way. Word. This isn't the way, so. Okay, I had I tasted your dish, I would've been talking about you. <laughs> I would've been like. But right, so I've been delivered, I okay? My pasta be al dente all the way, all right? Thank you. So Thank you for... we have grown, you know? Thank you. I'm thankful that I made that dish before I got married <laughs> because my husband may not have married me after that dish, but I am thankful. And it's about growing. I think yes. you have to give yourself um, room for error with cooking Absolutely. and have fun with it. And even Absolutely. when you have failed, it's like, okay, yeah. I, I failed at it, but. Now I know what to do different next time. You remember so. I told you, I did this dish, I added too much of my homemade um, seasoning, mm -hmm. and it messed it up. But now- Did that stop me from doing it again? No. No, you learn from it. Yeah, and trial and error, guys. It. That's it. Trial and error, so You're that's- Only in competition with yourself. Yes. That's it. Who, who are you competing against? Just don't try to like be the like group of people when you like <laughs> learn it. Like, right, right. right. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that. Keep it small until you perfect the thing. Yes. yes. And then Let's get it together. <laughs> and then you can open it up yeah. for everyone else to yes. taste. Snatch it all the way. <laughs> yes. Until you cook for a crowd. Yes. That's what I've learned. But this is this is awesome. I, I love that we have different options. Yes. You know, you like this. Different options. Yeah, this wouldn't work for me with this egg, but mm -hmm. I would eat it with the rice. Okay. But this would be perfect for like someone that's on a diet. Yes. Or someone that's trying to cut on carbs. Yes. Um, but this is also good as like an appetizer dish. Yes. For like if you're having like a dinner party or something. Absolutely. You can have a whole bunch of different, like oh, you said, yeah. lettuce cups or lettuce wraps. Cucumber. Oh, Ooh, a cucumber. Cucumber. Canapé. Yes. You know, and you can go, you can take it to other levels. 
that you're not even thinking of. I mean, there's so many things you can do. I like mushrooms. I, I would add mushrooms to my meat mixture. Yeah. I love mushrooms. Mushrooms, they ain't for me. <laughs> but that's me, you know, whereas, like, I know a lot of people, my husband loves mushrooms. Yes. So I think this would be really good. Creating, like, an awesome stir fry yes. to accompany this. Meatless. Yeah. This can be meatless by just using mushrooms. So wait, we can use the same ingredients, the same sauce, and use a, like a shrimp substitute Absolutely. or vegetable substitute? Absolutely. Now the only thing with shrimp is, okay, it has a taste. caveat. Shrimp, you never want to overcook your shrimp, okay? Because it gets hard and shriveled and oh my God. So what I would do <laughs> is, what I often do with my shrimp, let's say I, I was doing shrimp with this dish. I would par cook my shrimp, right? So, Still pink, but a little cooked. So I part cook it, right? Take it off the heat. I would make the sauce on its own. With all of your ingredients. With all of the ingredients. Let the sauce reduce. Touch it. Throw the shrimp in and along with my basil. Basil. That way the shrimp will finish cooking in that liquid. Shrimp cooks really quickly. The shrimp will finish cooking. It would release its juices. Add a little bit to your your uh, your sauce. And the basil will still be intense enough to flavor your dish. Awesome. Yeah. So it wouldn't be like like that shriveled up. Right. Oh, rock, can't rock, can't hard and overcooked shrimp. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> It'll be you par cook it just to you don't want to throw raw shrimp in your cook sauce. I would par cook it halfway, then finish cooking it at the end. So let it uh, let it cook and release its juices and um, because the heat will intensify and bring it all together. Okay, so I, I meant to ask you this earlier, but I didn't. So if I wanted to create this dish and I don't have a wok, mm -hmm. what can I use? Use a skillet. Just a skillet. Yeah. We can use a skillet. High heat. High heat. High heat is the, the trick. Remember, uh, the wok, it, it, it's high heat all over. It's evenly distributed high heat, so it's better when tossing mm -hmm. and cooking. Use a pan. You just have to remember high heat, continue to stir. And use a wood spoon. And use a wood spoon. Yes. No scrapey scrapey. You don't want all that extra stuff in your food. We don't. Yeah, we, don't. we really don't. And um, please keep in mind that gluten free, there are gluten free options. Uh, the sauces come in gluten free. I use reduced sodium soy sauce okay. because of hypertension. Um, of course, of the rice, you can also substitute cauliflower rice. Gluten free. Oh, so it's always is actually good too. It's delicious. Yeah, I didn't know that. Have you ever tasted mine? Yes, girl. Oh. <laughs> it's good. It's amazing. Okay. It is. It is. All right. It is. I think you were day for that one. Yes, I think you you probably were the one that got me into cauliflower rice oh, yes. and Brussels sprouts. Because yes. I never liked yes. Brussels sprouts. Yes. So yes, I remember that. Yes. I give that to you. Many people. Thank you. Yes. Food can be enjoyed and delicious. Even the ones that you're scared of, I guarantee I can make it fun. And I love that. And that's why we're cooking with love. Yes. Yes. You can cook things that look good, that taste good, that's yes. good for your body. Yes. Have fun with it. So when you are making this meal, make sure that you have fun with it. Have fun. Do it with somebody else. Do it with your kids. Do it with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Do it with your friends. Do it yeah. with anybody. And even if you're doing it by yourself, do it by yourself and have fun with it. I put my music on. Yeah. I'm dancing <laughs> when I'm cooking. Have fun. fun. That's, the, that's important. Pick a new I, recipe. Get a book. Take a recipe from that book and have at it. Yes. And improve it and love it. I mean... Cooking, you can cook with love with anything. So I think for 2021, what I'm gonna do, I'm not into resolutions, but I'm into improving and just like, just making changes. So I think for 2021, what I'm gonna do is like, maybe every two weeks, try a new recipe. Yes. I won't put the pressure of saying every every week, okay. but maybe every two weeks, I'll try like a new recipe. There I'll get go. a cookbook and I'll try a new recipe because this was like, this was, Simple to follow. Mm -hmm. It looks like a gourmet meal, mm -hmm. but you added your own twist and you know made it to your liking. So okay. I'm excited, and I hope you guys are excited too. And I can't wait to see what you guys create yes. and to see your dishes. So don't forget yes. to tag us. Let us know that you're watching. Comment. Send us some love. And yes, we can't wait. 
I know y'all dishes are gonna be bomb, so. <laughs> Show me though, poof is in the pudding. Yes! I wanna see, <laughs> don't tell me, I wanna see. Yes, so, since the fast is over, that means it's time to cook, and we're gonna cook with love. So show us what you got. Yes. So thank you so much for joining us today for Cooking with Love with Chef Nancy. And we hope that you had a great time with us. We know we had a great time and like all the things come to an end, but we about to really eat this food. But you know what? We about to chow down. We're gonna have to take a bite for them before we go so that like they know like how it tastes, right? Like everybody needs to know how it tastes. So nobody else is gonna use this food. No. So, okay. Mm -hmm. My God. Tell the people. Tell the people. Tell the people. Let them know. Let them know. First of all, are we Let finished doing? Let the people know. I'm about to tell you guys what I taste. What do you taste? Oh my gosh. So you see she got, it's not the same spoon going in the pot, okay? Oh my God. I taste the sauce. I taste the chili, but it's not overpowered. I taste the basil. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet. So it's like a perfect balance of the salt and the sweet together. And I taste, Ooh. I taste it all. It's so savory. I can't wait to guys. eat it, guys. So that means it's time to go. <laughs> it's time to go. It's time to eat. But once again, we so enjoyed having you guys with us today. I had fun. And yeah, I had fun I too. Had fun. Yeah, so if you guys want to see more of this, let us know. Yes. So have a great day. God bless. Bye. <laughs>